Welcome and hello. Today we're going to go over how to install and configure an LPR camera on the UNV platform. To get started, we need to plug the camera into the back of a compatible NVR, and then we're going to wait for it to finish its boot up sequence and we will go from there. Once the camera has finished its initial setup, we'll go ahead and see an image pop up on the screen, and then once that happens, we can go ahead and start making some configuration changes to get all of this working. To begin, we're going to go ahead and go into the main system menu, and then go down to where you plug the camera in, in this case being on channel 16, so we can see that it is connected and currently live. And now we're going to need to go over to a Windows-based computer and go into the web interface of the NVR. On here, you're going to log in with your standard credentials for your administrator account and the password that you set up when setting up the NVR. And then we are going to go into the setup menu. Next, we need to go to the camera submenu and then locate channel 16 and then click on access on the far right side to go into its interface. Here you're going to log in with the 123456 password if this is your first time logging into this camera. And then check the box on the privacy policy once you have read it and then click OK. And then you will be given the opportunity to enter in your new password. So enter in your old 123456 password and then enter in a strong password twice and then after you've entered in matching passwords, go ahead and put in an email address that you can use in case you ever need to do a password reset on this camera. Here I'm making a quick detour back to the NVR to update the password on channel 16, just so that we don't have any loss of connections as we go through this tutorial. Go ahead and click access again to get back into the camera's interface and then enter in your new password. Here we're going to go back into the setup menu and go to video and audio and then go to video encoding. I believe that you should have this set to 60 frames per second on the capture mode and H.265 for the video compression. But by default the bitrate is too low so go on and adjust it to 4096 at minimum and then hit save. And if you want to have a substream for your recorder, you can go ahead and turn on a substream. I recommend 512 KB at D1 resolution. Make sure to hit save before leaving this menu, and then we're going to move to the smart submenu. This is where you set up your capture area for license plates to be read. So this box can be adjusted to any size you want. Uh, it is recommended to keep it somewhere between at a half or a third of the overall image size. Um, Uniview also recommends that it's in the lower portion of the camera's field of view. Once you have it set to the size that you want, go ahead and click OK and then click Save before leaving this menu. After that, we're going to go over to the System menu and then we're going to click on the tab for Photo Server. So first we need to check the Enable box and then we're going to need to set up the server IP address. To find this, we go back over to the NVR tab and we're going to then go to the network submenu. At the bottom, it has the PoE NIC address. We're gonna copy that and then jump back over to the IP camera and then go ahead and paste what you have just copied into the server IP field. The server port should be 5073, so if you have a different number, make sure that you do update it. On the LPR ID, just something so that you know which camera number this is, I'm just going to put a 1. And the device ID is actually really specific. So you need to start with 10 zeros. After entering those 10 zeros, you need to enter 121, followed by four more zeros, and then a three-digit ID. I'm going to use 123. After that, you need to update the password to the NVR's main administrator password. You're going to enter it twice, 
And then once you're done with all of this, hit save at the bottom of the screen. Now go ahead and highlight and copy the device ID. And we are going to take that information over to the NVR menu. So on the NVR, we need to go down to platform, followed by video and image database, and then configure VIID. Here we need to find our channel ID for our LPR. I installed it on channel 16, so I need to scroll all the way to the bottom. And then you're going to paste the channel ID that you copied from the other menu. Once you've done that, go ahead and click save and wait probably between three to five minutes for it to go online. It's going to take a little bit of time. Just be patient. You can click refresh, but you need to wait until it actually shows online before we can move on. I went ahead and sped up this process. So we're just waiting for it to show online. It now currently shows up. So we can move on from this menu and get into the next portion. At this point, we don't really need the web interface anymore. So I'm going to be shifting over to the NVR itself. Now that we have the camera configured and connected on the NVR, we're going to go ahead and do a quick test to see if it can read a license plate. Now that we have a successful capture, I'm going to go ahead and do a few others that I don't record and show you how that looks like on playback. So it actually doesn't use the playback menu. We need to go into the main menu and then click on VCA. Once that comes up, click VCA search and then motor vehicle search. Here I'll just start with the default 24 hour time frame and hit search. And then you'll see all the license plates that it captured within the last 24 hours. Clicking on any of them will give you a small video clip showing you when it captured that plate. And if you want to be able to look for a specific plate, you can. You just go back out of this menu. And on plate number, go ahead and type in the license plate number that you're looking for. After you're done typing in the number, hit enter and then hit search again. And now it will only show instances of that license plate number. And that is the basic setup of an LPR camera. Some customizations are required to make them work better in certain scenarios. So if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Otherwise, thank you for watching and please stay tuned for any future videos from We Supply Security.